gather in the presence of God this Sunday, the 23rd of August. We give thanks for the week that is past now. We give thanks to God for the week that is beginning today. We lift up to you, Lord, all our desires, our emotions, our preoccupations, everything that is in our hearts and our minds. We know that you are with us, Lord. We pray for uh, the people who are on the path of the storms uh, coming or colliding in the Gulf of Mexico. We pray for all those families that are most vulnerable in the Caribbean islands, Haiti, the DR, the Bahamas, Cuba, and also our people here in the States in the Gulf of Mexico and the Keys and uh, the states where these storms will um, land. We pray also for the ongoing pandemic, all the, all the people, um, and give thanks to God that the numbers in our own Miami Day are decreasing, still high, but decreasing a little bit. We thank you, Lord, for that especially for the work of healthcare workers and essential workers that keep us, keep us going. Especially pray for those who are unemployed or underemployed. People have lost their businesses, small business. That you may be with them and guide them and keep them, Lord, during these trying times. My brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We begin recognizing our faults and confessing our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it's now and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with this song. Know this. The Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his course with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart 
in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and splendor, and his righteousness endures forever. He makes his marvelous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gives food to those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown people the power of his works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. All his commandments are sure. They stand forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who act accordingly have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Revelations. After this I looked, and there in heaven a door stood open, and the first voice which I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and there in heaven stood a throne, with one seated on the throne. And the one seated there looked like jasper and coralin. And around the throne is a rainbow that looks like emerald. Around the throne are 24 thrones, and seated on the thrones are 24 elders, dressed in white robes, with golden crowns on their head. Coming from the thrones are flashes of lightning, and rumblings, and peals of thunder. And in front of the throne burnt seven flaming torches, which are the seven spirits of God. And in front of the throne, there is something like a sea of glass, like crystal. Around the throne and on each side of the throne are four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind. The first living creature, like a lion, the second living creature, like an ox, the third living creature, with a face like a human face, and the fourth living creature like a flying eagle. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and inside. Day and night, without ceasing, they sing, Holy, 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 the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures gave glory and honor and thanks to the one who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall before the one who is seated on the throne and worship the one who lives forever and ever. They cast down crowns before the throne, singing, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 16, the song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. 
he has raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it's now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Mark. He left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kid and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. It's pretty. You know, I always um, impacted uh, by by this uh, lesson um, because as, as a pastor, as a priest in the church, I believe that one of the challenges that the church has today, and I mean challenge as an opportunity, is that of efficacy. What I mean by that is how efficacious, how good and, and able are we as communities of faith to reach out uh, to others in our own towns, in our own families, in our own neighborhoods. I'm talking neighborhoods of around the church, the, the, the sanctuary, the building per se, but also in our own neighborhoods of where we all live. And reading that for Jesus, it was very challenging to reach out to his own kindred. Gives me comfort. gives me what Ignatius will call as a consolation uh, because it's not an easy task, has never been an easy task. When we are to lead those who are closest to us, and I guess it has to do with Maybe they know too much about us. Maybe 
they don't see that through us, the divine can communicate to them. But it's clear that in the lesson for today, they had, Jesus had that very same challenge that we are having today. Again, that challenge of efficacy. How are you efficacious in and, and you know, good at getting the message across? communicating and also having people to trust and follow you, especially when those people are, are the closest to you. I was uh, talking to Eduardo from the diocese this morning, who is our host for this service, um, that one of his sons has, and I hope Eduardo doesn't, mean that I, doesn't mind that I share this with you, but he has over 300,000 followers in YouTube. And um, these younger kids are so good at uh, doing technology and reaching out to their generation. But that's a challenge for the church. And it was indeed the challenge for Jesus himself when he was in that synagogue. And by the way, what you have in front of you on the screen, it's, um, it's an icon that is on one of the walls of that very same synagogue in Nazareth, where it is believed, tradition has it, that Jesus went to preach. In the Gospel of Mark, the first to be written of the synoptics, uh, the story doesn't tell us a lot. I think the story is most beautiful in Luke, uh, because they tried actually to killed Jesus after he unrolled the scroll of the book of the prophet Isaiah and wrote about the year of the Jubilee. Uh, he read about the year of the Jubilee, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has uh, given me to uh, give release of the captives um, and the oppressed, uh, the year of the Lord's favor, right? I'm paraphrasing it and I'm, I don't have the text in front of me. But it's that beautiful passage uh, that is found in, in Luke uh, of Jesus preaching at the same synagogue. And here we have it. Uh, that's, that, that icon is from Jesus preaching in that very same synagogue, which is hanging in what tradition has it to be that place in Nazareth, uh, where Jesus delivers uh, this teaching. But the reading from Mark uh, says that he went on the Sabbath, as was his custom, and many who heard him preach, we don't know what he preached, according to the Gospel of Mark, were astounded. They said, where did this man get all of this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? And here comes the problem. Do we know him very well? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Hoses, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his, his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. We don't know what he said. We do know that people were offended by whatever Jesus said. And again, from that line of bringing comfort to us today, 2,000 years later, we know from our very own lives and our very own story and unfolding history that it doesn't take a lot to offend people nowadays. We know that it doesn't take a lot for people to lose it, especially in the climate in which we are living. Uh, in the last years. And yet, in the middle of 
all of that, we have this reality of Jesus going through the same probably emotional roller coaster that we can experience today in our work and in our life and in our churches, right? You, I'm pretty sure everyone here present this morning has their own stories of things we have all said with the best of intentions and someone, someone in the crowd, someone in God knows uh, from a, another place, hears what we say and takes offense at what we have said. And then we look at it, we hear, if we are lucky enough to hear about it, and we wonder why what we said offended someone. The reality, I think, my friends, is that the, the invitation of the spiritual life, of the Christian life, is to be people of joy, people who trust, and people who are open to the challenges posed in our own time and day. And the gospel reading presents to us a contrast where we kind of like see Jesus struggling with his own people about the message God has sent him to deliver, a message of salvation a message of grace, but a message that probably required whatever Jesus preached about in that occasion, required a change of heart on the part of the people he was preaching to. And that's not exclusive either to the people of Jesus' day. It is inclusive of all times and essentially our very own day and time because we are not any different i know in my own life god's jesus's invitation to me to always be born again to always renew my commitment to the gospel to always push me in perhaps many times doing things that I rather don't get into, simply because they can make us uncomfortable. They can make me uncomfortable. And God is always in the business of, of finding our neighbor in those places we don't want to be at, whatever those places might be. And people can take offense at that. And people continue to take offense uh, what God may be asking us to do through the prophets like Jesus, the Messiahs like Jesus, the Son of Man like Jesus, who live in our own reality and time. Of course, Jesus is the culmination of all of those realities. But I want to believe that Jesus and Christ lives in the body of the faithful and lives in the lives of the people who are always challenging us to do better, to get closer to God and neighbor and self, right? So um, you have a lot going on here, right? I'm going to um, give you a summary. I think First, it brings me comfort and all of us who are in church life and business, so to speak, brings me and should bring us comfort that whatever Jesus went through 2,000 years ago, we will go through today um, or might be going through today. How do we become efficacious to our own people? And sometimes it feels that we're not very efficient in what we do especially that in churches today, preaching, reaching out, getting the people in the pews, getting the people to commit to the Christian life. That doesn't mean that 
people are not committing to the Christian life. It's just that they might not be doing it in the conventional ways that they have always done it, right? I want to be clear with that. And also, the second part, I believe, is in that of the challenge posed to us by Jesus' words in the synagogue at Nazareth, whatever those words might be in the Gospel of Mark, but they were probably words of challenge to the people. Because if people got upset about those words, if people um, didn't like what Jesus was saying, and that the Gospel reading tells us about, it means that Jesus' words were probably very strong. And so the second point is that when we hear words that challenge us in the Christian life, we should remember that they're intended for our growth. When God asks us to be in places we don't want to be, we should remember that God is asking us to grow. God is asking us to go the extra mile. And we should try it within our human limitation to do that, to try to go the extra mile, even if we don't want to be there. And thirdly, and I think is, is the greatest invitation here in this lesson is that we ought to be like Jesus in our own day. We ought to be the prophets of our time. We ought to be the people who bring good news, the people who reach out to those who nobody wants to reach out to. We ought to be the gospel for others. We ought to be neighbors with those who whom nobody wants to be neighbors with. And, and that's a big challenge. That ties kind of like nicely with the second point I was talking about, of not liking to be in those space, spaces where, or places where God may want us to be uh, at. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's beautiful, it's challenging, and it's comforting. Um, all three things together. And I pray, I pray that God will allow us to have and give us the strength and the wisdom and the grace and the love to be able to push ourselves a little bit in whatever way God may want us to be pushed, so to speak. Uh, perhaps for you right now at St. Matthew's is this time of being in like limbo. Uh, where you don't know who is going to be your priest, you uh, are away from the sanctuary because of the pandemic, uh, you are away from your church you love so much because of everything that is going on, everything is disrupted in your life uh, because of what's happening right now, and God is asking of all of us to care for each other, to be a little bit more patient, to um, be patient not just with the pandemic, but also with this whole process of uh, selecting uh, a new priest, a new rector uh, for St. Matthew. And, uh, and to wait, wait even when uh, we think the wait is not necessary. Um, because we, we tend, we have that tendency of wanting to go back to the space that is familiar to us, which is a human tendency tendency for everybody. It's not just for, for the people of St. Matthew. It's all human beings go through that process. But may it be, whatever this process might be, may it be a time of growth uh, for all of us, including, including myself. And may we hear in this time those challenging words of Jesus and invitation from Jesus um, to to grow and may we not take offense at whatever Jesus may be telling us in our own day and, and time. Amen. I invite you now to reaffirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he ascended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We may now offer... To Almighty God, our very own prayers of intercessions or thanksgiving. Heavenly God, we pray for your creation, especially for this planet, our island home. We pray for governments, especially our very own government, as we approach uh, the elections. We pray for peace. We pray for understanding in the midst of differences. We pray that we may all seek your wisdom and your grace in this world. That whatever we may do may be 
an answer to your calling to serve others in the common good. We pray that we may see and encounter Christ in each other. We pray for the people who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit. We pray for those who take offense at, of the words of others because of that very same suffering they might be going through in their lives. And it gets projected into other realities of life. We pray that we all may find your shalom, your peace in our own day, in our own time. We pray especially for those who are ill. Because of the pandemic or because of illnesses that they had before all of this began. Especially pray for those in our community as listed in our parish cycle of prayer. Alan Barron, Candice Clifford, Sean Donnelly, Madison Ford, Carmen Garcia, Franklin Harris, Deacon Joanne, Robert Lippler Jr., for Lydia Mercy, Susan Miller, George Montesino, Shaila Morales, Sandra Morera, Lisa N., James O., Luz Obando, Julio Perez, Joanne Pennerman, Lindsay Rosen, Anna Sasso, Charlotte Sueb, Everett Soar, Gladys Tejera, William Turner, Marisa Valverde, Grace Avalon, for Lee, Magali, Michael, Rosa, Zach, Jack, Barbara Garcia, Tim Clifford, and for all the men and women serving in our armed forces. We give you thanks, Almighty God, for all the blessings of this life. We thank you for family and friends and those people who are prophets in our own day who challenge us to be better servants of your good news. We pray for those in our community who are celebrating their birth anniversaries this upcoming week. We especially give you thanks for their life and may they continue to grow in your grace as they grow in age. We especially pray for Bonnie Flanagan, whose birthday is tomorrow, Tom Houston, whose birthday is tomorrow, Barbara Rosen, whose birthday is on the 27th, as well as Kay Shanklin and Sherilyn Thompson, who celebrate their birth anniversary on August 27th. Again, may your grace abound in their lives so that they may be a beacon of that very same grace and love in the world. And may they continue to have health to glorify your holy name. Amen. I now invite you to say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we were unworthy servants give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us. 
and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. For the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of our mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen.